Fancy cup of tea, Uncle Bert? No, thanks. Are you sure? I don't want to be no bother. Oh, you're no bother? No, thanks. The last thing I want to be is a bother. Well, would you like me to turn the telly on? No, thanks. Well, there's a very good film showing. I've seen it. Well, there's, there's football on the other side. I've seen that too. Oh, Uncle Bert, it's only just on. How can you have seen it? You've seen one football game, you've seen the lot. Well, would you like a walk around the park? I did that this morning. It rained. Emil, can you help me? Hi, Mr. Quigley. Emil, I can't... Oh, yeah, this hand. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll get it. Uh... <laughs> hello? Stand still. Oh, hello, Frank. Oh, we'd love to, wouldn't we, Mill? Yes, whatever it is. Great. Okay, sure, we'll be ready. Wow, Frank and Norman want to take us to the country. They're picking us up in 20 minutes. 20 minutes? 20 minutes? Yo, Maggie, will you put the iron on? Sure. Okay. Uh, Millie, do you know, I think I fancy that cup of tea after all. He's decided he'd like a cup of tea after all. Millie, I don't want to be unkind, but your uncle's been here a week. When is he going to go home? Oh, well, he will soon, I guess. It's just he's lonely. He likes people to fuss over him. Well, I think we've overdone the fussing bit. Oh, we can understand how he feels. Since he retired, he just hasn't got enough to occupy his time. Oh, Millie, I like your uncle. I really do. But as long as he has nothing to do, couldn't he do it at his place? Oh, I guess you're right. I'll go speak to him right now. Are you going out, then? Oh, uh, yes, Uncle Bert. Um, Uncle Bert, you've been here a week now. Oh, not so loud, darling. Well, it's not a secret, is it? No, no, it's just these pains. Pains? In the head. Just a spasm now and again. Oh, I see. No, what I wanted to say is... Oh. oh, there's one now. Bad as that? Well, shouldn't you see a doctor? I've seen him, but he can't do nothing. Not till he gets the results of the x-rays. X-rays? But what does he think's wrong with you? Oh, don't worry. He said it might not be anything at all. Well, d didn't he give you something to take for it? Stay close to your loved ones, he said. And keep your fingers crossed. Oh, do you? Now, that sounds bad. Oh, now, Millie, don't start burning me bridges till I get to them. Uh, what was it you wanted to talk to me about? Oh, nothing, Uncle Bert, nothing at all. Are you sure it was nothing? It was nothing? Well, if you're quite sure it was nothing, then you have ten minutes to get your face on. Ten minutes? Uh, Millie, mm. uh, did you forget my cup of tea? Come in. You wanted to see me, Mr. Beecham? Wanted is hardly the word I would have chosen, but I do find it necessary to speak with you. You're on flight 403 to Gibraltar, are you not? Uh, yes, sir. I have a cousin returning to London on that flight. Oh, you'd like us to look after him? Her, Mrs. Beale. She's been living in the United States for 20 years, and she's coming back to live with my wife and me. Oh, that'll be nice. Mm, nice. Mm, another mouth to feed, another mouth to listen to. Well, would you like us to drop her off in Paris? You're not scheduled to land in Paris. That's what I mean. <laughs> It was, it was a joke, Mr. Peach. Yes, well, all right, we'll see that your cousin is well looked after. Don't worry. Dropped her off in Paris. Hello, Mrs. Beale, would you like a drink? No, thank you, dear, but you're mighty sweet to ask. You know something? I'm going to put in a good word with my thousand five about you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's see, sir. Yours was a scotch and soda, wasn't yes, it? Yes, please. Oh, yes. let me do that for you. Oh, 
Thank you. Uh, isn't that the cutest little old mm -hmm. bottle? Soda. Yes, please. Now, you say when. When? 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 Oh, when? never mind. It lasts a lot longer that way. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. No, uh, you, you know. No. Down the snow, we always say nice, long, cold drink is the best thing in the world. Thank you, Mrs. Bill. Think nothing of it, honey. I just love to help. <laughs> say, you know, you, you look mighty uncomfortable. Let me fix your little old pillow for you. Hey, uh, this looks great. Oh, good. There yeah. <laughs> Busy, are you girls? Oh, yes, 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 we are, Miss Beale. Oh, yes, yes. say, yes, yes. Now, this is far too much work for just the two of you. Oh, hey, you know, my kitchen at home's much bigger than this. I'm going to speak to my cousin about that. Oh, no, please don't do that, Mrs. Beale. That's fine. Oh. We can find oh, it. Oh, now, now, let me serve these for you before they get cold. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That is against regulations. Oh. Excuse me. I'm oh. terrible. Yes, you take that. Oh. Thank you very much. Oh, here we go. Oh, hey, you forgot the tartar yeah, sauce. Right. Excuse me, Mrs. Beale. Oh. Yeah. Miss Beale, what are you doing? Putting the tomato sauce on the fish. Miss Beale, that's custard. <laughs> Our flight report. Hi, Mrs. Beale. Hi, Mrs. Beale. <laughs> Clive, these are the two hard-working girls I was telling you about. Our paths have crossed. <laughs> Good thing I was along on the flight to help them out. Yes, I am, Mr. Beecham. You want to meet? Uh, yes. The new regulation about unauthorized brewing of cocoa and misuse of the washroom. Have it printed and circulated to all stewardess personnel. The usual 150 copies. Mm -hmm. 150 copies? That woman needs help. Your flight report. Six pounds, 12 shillings, spoiled food, whiskey, etc. Etc. I suppose you did bring the aircraft back. Mr. Beecham, I think those figures should be looked at relatively. Relative? My cousin. Sixteen dollars worth of damage on one flight. What's she going to be like at home? Well, I guess she just likes to be helpful. So I noticed. Well, I have the same problem with my uncle, only he likes to be helped. Hey, wait a minute. She likes to be helpful and he likes to be helped. Maybe we're onto something. Onto what, Miss Ralston? I haven't got the slightest idea. Hey, Maggie, you are onto something. Yeah? Well, look, if, if he likes to be helped and she likes to be helpful, maybe they have something in common. Mm. What could a relative of mine possibly have in common with a relative of yours? <laughs> Each other. Now, now, they're both the right age and they're, they're both lonely. Mr. Beecham, you've got to do something about that. I've got to do something. A minute ago, I was an airline official. Now it's Sergeant Beecham's Lonely Hearts Club band. No, I, I, I mean, we've got to do something. We've... Yeah, well, you know, all of us. You have to bring these two people together. Hey, you're right. It could be love at first sight. Oh, Mr. Beecham, wouldn't that be romantic? Before you get them to the altar, I would like to say that I'm not sure about this idea. I'm not sure at all. Yes, Miss Fosdyke? I'm a patient woman. A real trooper. Hmm? I can take things on the chin. Mm -hmm. But that woman... That woman? That woman, Mrs. Beale, your cousin... Look, uh, take it easy, Miss Fosdyke. It can't be that bad. But it is. Your cousin, Mrs. Beale. That woman. She's jammed my stapler. Miss Grover, now I am sure about your idea. How can we bring these two people together? <laughs> Come right in. Oh, Nice to have visitors. Isn't that a nice surprise? Yes, isn't it? Mr. Quigley, I'd like you to meet my cousin, Beatrice Beale. Oh, How do you do? I'm delighted to meet you. <laughs> well, look, why don't you come and sit down here where oh. it's nice and comfy? <laughs> Thank you. There. Yes. <laughs> well, how about some music? Oh, that's a good idea. Yes. <laughs> my, it's bright in here. I think we might turn up a few lights. Oh, good. A man expected to see his cards. <gasps> I think I'll make some tea. Mr. Beachy, my dear, we go. 
Now you can have a nice cup of tea. Thank you. <laughs> yes, while we go and discuss business. Oh, yes, we must discuss business. Mm -hmm. Well, is everybody ready to go out and discuss business? Oh, yes, yes, I'm ready to go and discuss business. Uh, no, no, business. Yes, well, let's go then. Okay. Maybe you ought to discuss where you're going to discuss this business. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, yes, well, I thought we might discuss business um, out on the fire escape. Right, on the fire escape. I forgot. That's a good start. Let's hope nature takes its course from there. Nature? I'm not sure I like this. Oh, Mr. Beecham, we've got two lonely people who need each other. We must at least give them time to get acquainted. Shall I pour some tea? If you like. Uh, sugar? Four. Been a lovely day, hasn't it? All right. I hope your wife enjoyed it. <laughs> we've not got one. She died. You're a widower then. Well, isn't that a coincidence? I'm a widow. A lot of people die, you know. Yeah, I've been more than a year since Harvey set out on the great journey. I guess he ought to be there by now. Yeah, more than a year. Mind you, I don't know what I'd have done if it hadn't been for Mr. Jones. Who's he? The undertaker? Oh, no, he's my husband's friend. Oh, he, like, uh, looked after you, huh? No, I looked after him. <laughs> Say, you know you don't look too comfortable. Then let me fix your cushion. <laughs> Where's this Mr. Jones now, then? Oh, he's back in the States. Oh, good, there's some more pillars down in Savannah. That's where he lives. You know, we were going to get married, but I don't know. He, he just sort of seemed to lose interest. Are you sure you didn't smother him? Your turn for the chair. Thanks. Miss Grover, we've been here for nearly an hour. Don't you think we've given nature enough time? Oh, I suppose so. Come on. Aren't you coming? But I just got the chair. It's very quiet. Isn't that a good sign? That depends on your interpretation of the word good. Shall we go in? Hope we weren't too long. You two have been making friends. I can tell you, my cousin Beatrice felt most insulted. Well, I'm sorry, but we did our best. It was unfortunate, because cousin Beatrice seemed to hold your uncle in rather high esteem. Was there any sign that this feeling was reciprocated? You'll have to ask Millie. It was her uncle. Oh. Surely your uncle must have said something. Well, yes, he did. He, he said... He said... Miss Grover? Miss Ralston? He said your cousin was an old drab. I see. Come in. Oh, love, I wonder if you mind if I'd, uh, uh excuse me. Oh, <laughs> that's all right, Mrs. Beale. We were just leaving. Uh, Clive. Yeah. Excuse me, will you? Maggie. We were just leaving, Millie, remember? Uh, Maggie, will you look at this? What's going on? I'm sorry, but my friend has a thing about hair. Millie. Mr. Beecham, how would you feel about making a small investment? Investment? Yes, I think about 50 pounds should do it. Dinner at the Capricious. <laughs> Not likely. Oh, come on, Uncle Bird. It'll do you good to get out. It don't do you no good to go out in no night air. Everybody knows that. <sighs> Mr. Quigley, there's no difference between night air and day air. Scientists have proved that. Scientists? They don't know nothing. No, I think I'll just stay at home and have some fish and chips. Oh, come on, Uncle Bert. It isn't often I get the opportunity to buy you a meal. Just why do you want to buy me a meal? You're not trying to get me lumbered with that old drab again, are you? I can promise you there'll be no old drabs there tonight. Come on, Mr. Quigley, just this once. All right. Just this once.
terrible thing to do to a man. I feel like a poodle dressed up for a dog show. Forget the clothes, relax and enjoy yourself. Now don't worry about it, you look super. Then why is everybody staring at me? Hey, will you look at that gorgeous creature standing over there? She's coming over here. That's right, stand up, Uncle Bert. Why, is it the Queen? No, it's good manners. Oh. <laughs> Better than the old baggage you brought in the other night. That is the old ba Uncle Bert, this is Mrs. Beale. <laughs> you could have fooled me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, why don't we order? Yes, Uncle Bert, why don't you order for us? Uncle Bert. Oh, good idea. Now, what do you fancy, me darling? Good evening, uh, sir. Would you have an aperitif? Oh, no, I don't think so, but we'd like to have a drink before dinner. Look, Uncle Bert, why don't you two dogs and, and we'll order the meal? Yes? Oh, Good idea. Let's go and treat the light fantastic. <laughs> why didn't you tell me I'd have got dressed up? Mrs. Beale to marry you? It was the champagne. It was the grapes talking, but they was using my mouth. What did Mrs. Beale say? She said I'd made her the happiest woman in the world. I think that means yes. Well, of course it means yes. Oh, Uncle Bert, you'll love being married again. Someone to cook your meals, someone to look after you. You girls look after me fine. But we're always flying off somewhere. You'd have her here all the time. It would be perfectly wonderful. Wonderful? Hold your tongue. I don't want to get married. At least not yet. I don't even know the woman. But you asked her to marry you. I know that, don't I? That's why I'm asking you girls if you can't help me. Think of something that I could tell her. Well, you could tell her that you don't want to get married. I couldn't tell her that. She'd take it personally. That's why I thought maybe you girls could tell her for me. Tell her what? Well, just some little white lie. Some reason why I couldn't marry her. What little white love? Well, maybe you could tell her that I died or something. Oh, Uncle Bert. Oh, well, it's just an idea, Millie. I don't know what to do. Well, now you do know what to do, don't you? Do you mean tell her the truth? Yes. That's what I was afraid you meant. You're right, of course. I've got to tell her the truth. I've got to look her straight in both eyes and I've got to say, Beatrice, I don't want to marry you. That's what I've got to do. A man has to do things in life, hard things, but that's what makes a man of him. If that's her, tell her I died. Left on a vacation. Anything! <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Beale. Hello. <laughs> is Bert, uh, Mr. Quigley by any chance over here? Oh, well, yes, he is. Won't you come in? Thank you. Huh? Uncle Bert! There's someone to see you. Oh, hello, dear Beatrice. What a pleasant surprise. Yeah, well, well uh, I happen to be passing by, uh, walking, you know, and I, <laughs> I thought, uh, you know what? Ah, uh, I know. <clears throat> oh, well, maybe you two would like to be left alone. No! no. Maybe you two wouldn't like to be left alone. Beatrice, there's something I've got, got to, to tell you. 
There's something you've got to tell me. Oh, well, it can wait, wait. Uh, I, you tell me what you have to tell me. No, 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 that's quite all right. You go ahead. Uh, well, you know... Uh, <laughs> well, you, you, you know uh, what we were talking about last night? Oh, that's all right. Well, we know what you were talking about last night. Oh, you do? Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, well, it's going to be very difficult, isn't it? But... The Beatrice, is, let's stop beating about the bush. I, I can't, can't marry, marry you. you. No, no, Beatrice. I can't marry you. No, I just said that. You did? Yeah, I know. Oh, I know I said yes last night. But that wasn't me talking. That, that was the champagne. Fancy that. You remember when I told you about Mr. Jones, my late husband's friend? Ah. Uh. Well, I realized this morning that when you asked me to marry you and I said yes... I was really saying yes to Mr. Jones. How do you know he was asking? I called him this morning. And he asked you to marry him? No. But he said yes when I asked him to marry me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I remember now. Last night, it wasn't me that asked you, it was you that asked me. Oh, that's right, I did, didn't I? <laughs> oh, thank you, Bert. Mm, I gotta run now. I'm getting a plane back to the States this afternoon before Mr. Jones changes his mind. <laughs> bye, girls. Bye. 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 Nice trip. Well, how do you like that? No, no. How do you like that? Well, I think I could have a little toast now. Do you think you could fix me some, Millie? A minute ago, you were perfectly capable of fixing your own toast. Ah, uh, but a minute ago, my heart wasn't broken. Well, Miss Grover and Miss Ralston, I think we can congratulate ourselves. Cousin Beatrice is to be married, and if all goes well, we'll live happily ever after, thousands of miles away. Oh, yes, it's fine for you, Mr. Beecham, but I'm still left with lonely Uncle Bert. Well, I should have thought exposure to my cousin would have made him more aware of the opposite sex. Oh, he is. He's also aware of the fact that he almost got married and it scared him to death. He's promised never to look at another woman. <laughs> Miss Fosdyke, is that you? You called, Mr. Beecham. <clears throat> Uncle Bert! Mr. Quigley! Oh, I never could keep a promise, not even to myself. <laughs>